it out. The chick. Ah, Professor Eugenius is making breakfast. Only the eggs will never get cooked at this temperature. What are you doing? You can't heat up these eggs to temperatures that are this hot. Why can't you? The chicks! You'll kill them! What chicks? Where? This appliance! Do you even know what it is? I thought it was an egg cooker. You thought it was an egg cooker? Listen up! I do not want to see you around this thing. Not anywhere close. Got it? I won't get close to it. But, Grandpus, we don't even know what this is for. It's called an incubator. To help her chicks hatch, a mother hen sits on her eggs for a long time, keeping them warm with the heat of her body. An incubator is a device for hatching chicks that is used in place of the mother hen. It's always nice and warm inside, just like under a chicken's wing, but not too hot. An incubator can even turn the eggs so they get just the right amount of heat all over. Chicks that are hatched in an incubator are no different from the chicks that are hatched without them. Fire! What? This thunderstorm is really scary. Let's be scared together. I'm not scared at all. Me neither. I was joking. Just joking with you. What do you think? Are the chicks scared in there? Holy moly! Wow! That was a big one. Even the electricity got turned off. Uh, the incubator turned off, too. And the temperature is dropping. And for little chicks, is that bad? I'm sure it is. It's cold in here. These chicks need help, and Grandpa's isn't around. Then we're going to have to save these chicks without him. Nolik, get the door open. Uh, help me. I can't. Grandpa said I can't get near the incubator, so try opening it yourself. I <sighs> can't do it. And I can't help you. But the chicks are going to die of cold. Ugh, let's just do it. But don't you go and tattle to Grandpoos. I promise. Ah. Hooray! It's a bit early for hooray. Yeah, we'll warm up the chicks with the fire. Class! Time for hooray? Now? Yeah! Tideesh! Like sparrows, ducks, storks, and ostriches, all birds lay eggs and sit on them to help them hatch. And it's not only birds. Other animals, like snakes, crocodiles, and even turtles have babies that they hatch from eggs. To protect their children, they try to hide their eggs, like deep in the bushes, in the cracks of rocks, or in the sand. By the way, roe is also little eggs, just without the shells. From this fish roe, little hatchlings are born that will grow into big fish. And from tiny frog roe, tadpoles hatch that will then develop into full-grown adult frogs. And you've heard of dinosaurs, right? Well, those giant reptiles that lived millions of years ago, they also hatched out of eggs. What happened to the electricity in here? It's a blackout from the thunderstorm, I guess. This is just awful. <gasps> My incubator. <gasps> Someone lit a candle and the temperature is normal. So who put the candle in there? Tell us right now! Nolik, don't be a tattletale. It was me. By yourself. By myself? Of course yourself. I wasn't allowed near it. Well, yeah, you wasn't allowed near it. All by yourself. Then well done! You saved the chicks! Our hero! So, Fire, follow his example. And you, Nolik, accept our heartfelt thanks. Look inside. <laughs> They're starting to hatch. All right, Fire. Come take a look. Now I'm allowing you. Look! A little 
little chick. It's so cute. And so yellow. Look at him. What a little sweetie. Fire. Wood. Well, I really know who saved him. Tish. The gramophone. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. <laughs> she sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grandpoos. Grandpoos, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. <laughs> We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then a needle is placed on top of the record, and as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right, you don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great, let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great. Verda, are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just Cat falls glass. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without a with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one until there was a thud, and then the mighty giant fell straight into the mud. music playing. It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things and you fixed them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The mighty cream was working until there was a pop. And then the mighty giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one. A little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. Tom Tom 
Mrs. Mom really dances super. Yeah, she knows how to have a good time, even though she's a grown-up. The Eco Tester. Are you ready to see my new invention? I just can't wait to show you what it does. Whoa, what is it? An Eco Tester. And what is it for? This device lets you check vegetables or fruit, so you'll know if they're safe to eat. To grow apples, tomatoes, or melons faster and bigger, people add chemical fertilizers to the soil. But there's a problem if too much of these chemical fertilizers is used. When there's too much of them, the harmful chemicals get inside the fruits and vegetables, and that makes them very dangerous to eat. An eco-tester is a special device that quickly shows how much of these harmful chemicals have gotten inside of the food. And if the reading is too high, that means you shouldn't eat it. As you can see, the eco-tester shows that this apple is good. Well, let's see. Look, this one is safe, too. Ugh, it's not interesting this way. <laughs> These apples are all safe. Now let me take this delicious apple and, um, make it bad. <laughs> we will inject this apple with a harmful amount of nitrates. How come? What do you mean, how come? So we can see how the eco-tester works. So you see, the eco-tester clearly shows this apple is poisonous and can't be eaten. Is it only for apples or for any kind of fruit? Any fruit or vegetable. <gasps> I can get a watermelon to show you. <gasps> Could it really be true that watermelons can have nitrates too? Of course they can have nitrates. <laughs> Humans often act without any concern for nature. The waste from factories, airplanes, cars and cities causes tremendous damage to nature. Species of plants and animals disappear. Air, water, and soil become polluted. And many other kinds of ecological problems appear. And humans shouldn't think that ecological problems are just nature's problems. Because when humans harm nature, they are also harming themselves. People breathe in the dirty air, drink polluted water, and eat food grown in soil contaminated with chemicals. If humans don't want to drink milk filled with poisons, and they want to eat ecologically clean fruits and veggies, then they must learn to treat nature as their friend. Hey, why don't we ugh, test these apples ourselves? Ugh. Nolik, help me out. I don't care. That apple's poisoned with nitrates. Oh, apples. Mmm. <gasps> Elisa, don't eat that. Elisa, <laughs> Elisa, oh. Elisa, stop. Uh, please sit down. What? You bit into it? Yes, and what? Uh, oh, no. It's poisoned. What? <laughs> Do you have trouble talking? Oh, yeah. You feel faint. Oh, I'm fainting. Oh. Elisa, hang in there. What? There's no poison in that apple she ate. Oh, my assistant. Oh, no. I've poisoned her. Oh, oh, oh Lisa, please. There was no poison in that apple. Oh, no. He didn't hear us. What should I do? Is I know how to make him hear. Hello? It's an emergency. It's a case of, of poisoning. Not me! I poisoned someone! Yes! With an apple! Fire! I mean, poison! Oh. Professor, this apple has no poison in it. The bad one rolled away onto the floor. Did it really? This is just fantastic news. Can you see me, Elisa? I can't see anything. How's that? I see you. I can see you. I can see again. I have great news. There's no poison at all in this apple. Are you sure? It's perfectly fine. Here, take a look. The eco-tester shows that there are no harmful chemicals inside. It's wonderful news. This is one excellent apple. And nutritious. 
This appliance of yours is simply wonderful. Now she'll say he's a genius. <laughs> Professor, you are a genius. Thank you for saving my life. Oh, it was nothing. Actually, it was Nolik. He saved her life. I did? Dropping the watermelon was your idea, wasn't it? Ah, you're right. I saved her life. <laughs> the Shadow Play. Hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you doing here? Uh, I dropped a paper clip. Give me some light. <laughs> huh. What's so funny, huh? We're trying to help you out. <laughs> You've got funny shadows, that's what. Hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eagle. <laughs> and Simka is a goose. <laughs> she looks more like a moose. I do, huh? <laughs> You're like real actors performing in a show. Uh-huh. Actors play in a theater, you know. And we're just under a bed. And so what? <gasps> How about we make our very own theater? A theater with shadows. Glass! Tom Thomas, we need a, a piece of paper, a huge sheet. <laughs> it's really quite easy to make your own shadow theater. You can make the screen out of a white sheet or a big piece of paper. Next, make sure the room is dark and shine a desk lamp at the screen. Now, to make the shadows, just put yourself or a cardboard cutout between the lamp and the screen. Your shadow or the shadow of your puppets will come to life. But make sure that the audience sits on the other side of the screen. The play will be much more magical for them from that side. Tom Thomas, light! Oh, wow! Simka! You look totally like the real Red Riding Hood. Hello, dear granddaughter. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. <laughs> no, like, come on, we're rehearsing. <laughs> the wolf's voice is funny. Grandmother, I never noticed what very big teeth you've got. They're so much better to eat you with, my dear. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Let them out, Wolf. Or I'll, or I'll get them out whoa, myself. Ha <laughs> ha, you'll stop me with that little stick? Hey, that's not in the fairy tale. But in the fairy tale, it's a normal hunter. And what do you think I am? Look for yourself. You're way too small to be the hunter. Fine, then go to your play without me. Well, I guess I'll have to make the hunter out of paper then. That's all. Take a break. I'm really thirsty. She was so salty, that grandma. No, Lick, don't be upset. The wolf is huge and I'm so little. Then let's make you bigger. You see? Now you're bigger. Yeah, you're right. And if we go back here, then I'm even bigger. Now you know. If you go back here near the lamp, your shadow will get bigger on the screen. Class! There are just so many different kinds of theaters in the world. In the dramatic theater, the actors speak the lines of the playwright. At the opera, the actors don't speak their lines. They sing them, accompanied by an orchestra. And here at the ballet, the performers don't speak or sing their parts. Here, the story is told with dance. There are also theaters where the performers are animals. In an animal theater, you can watch performances by cats and dogs, or goats and pigeons, or even bears and seals. There are also theaters where the stories are told by puppets. To tell the truth, the puppets are brought to life with the help of people. Yes, there are so many different kinds of theater. My favorite is the Shadow Theater. I think it's the most beautiful and mysterious theater of them all. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. And grandmother, what great big sharp teeth you've got. Oh, the better to eat you up with, my dear. Um. Ooh, just wait. Aha, Wolf, I've got you. The hunter looks so strong. You're a hunter? Then where's your gun? Why do I need a gun? You're so tiny I could use a fly swat. 
water. But I'd rather do it like this. Like what? With my bare hands. Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> your favorite? Mine was the grandmother. Well, I think Red Riding Hood was the best. For me, the hunter. He was so mighty and so fearless. And for me, the special effects. <laughs> the pen. Not here either. Tom Thomas, are you looking for me? <gasps> no, for a red pen. I need it right now. What do you need it for? Here, look what my teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you going to do with a red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh. oh, wow. Good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's. And then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See? No problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah. Then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen. It's more like a pen knife. Oh, look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack a map there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. It. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink, so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable, except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Is this the one? You're right. That's it. Don't you just see how awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help us. What do you need the red pen for? Well, Tom Tom's 
and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behave badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? The toothbrush. Once I finish you, my top secret growth potion, I will create my own giant canine crew! And then I'll rule the... Whoa! Wow, this is super! You're better than a TV show. Oh yeah, it's fun, but it's gonna end badly. <laughs> Tom Thomas, get ready for bed. I'm going, Dad. But first, my secret recipe. We start with a bit of carboniterous. And now a little bit of bread and butteress. And finally, beard of fumarissa. Chusaka. Don't be afraid. Drink, my baby. And you'll grow ten times your size. What? It doesn't taste good? Oh, right. I forgot it needed stirring. This hypersonic mixer will do the trick. Tom Thomas, you shouldn't use what doesn't belong to you. That's your father's toothbrush. Ah! Hey, cut it out! You're acting crazy! <laughs> are a big boy, but your brain is smaller than Nolix. Why, thank you. Just go put the toothbrush back in its place. I'm like you never touched it. Nah, that's not right at all. Tom Thomas, what's up? I'm almost done, Dad. Simka, Nolik, please, I really need your help. No panicking. First, we need to understand what could have broken inside of there. An electric toothbrush is really simple, as long as you know these three parts the battery, the motor, and a very clever mechanism that connects the motor with the bristles. The whole secret to the toothbrush is right in there. That mechanism uses the spinning of the motor to make the bristles move very fast back and forth, from left to right, from right to left. And that's how it brushes your teeth. So what can we do about it? Here's what we do. First, we take out the motor, then we take the gears out, and then the mechanism. How much time do we need to do that? One or two hours. What? No! Just listen here, Tom Thomas. You need to open up the battery compartment. Wait for me right here. These are your teeth. Well, I mean, they're not your teeth, but you get what I'm saying. Nowadays, we use a toothbrush to clean our teeth, but it wasn't always that way. The ancient Egyptians used a chewed stick to scrape their teeth, while the ancient Greeks rubbed their teeth with a rag. And the Vikings, well, who knows what they used? And then, only 200 years ago, an Englishman named William Addis came up with something better. He drilled holes into a meat bone, inserted bunches of bristles into them, and there you go, the toothbrush. And here's what I need to tell you all as a fixie, that is, as a master repairman. You need to make sure to brush your teeth often, especially after eating, or you'll be getting them repaired often at the dentist. Well, is something wrong with the mechanism? No, it's fine. Is the motor burned out? No. Then what's wrong with it? You're not going to believe it. But the battery died. That's all? I know what to do. I'll put in new ones. <laughs> You 
Your dad turned the toothbrush on. Looks like everything's fine. It's working. Ooh, way to go. Excellent. Your dad will never find out what kind of slop you mixed up with his brush. What slop? <laughs> How dare you, Nolik? How dare you refer to my mighty potion like this? Tom Thomas, somehow soap got all over my toothbrush. Can you explain that? Ay, ay, ay. Well, you got caught. What do you say now? <laughs> the music box. And when the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Simka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes going to come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. See? It's just like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grampus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting ah. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? Mmm, a coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher. <laughs> a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? Go. That's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now, don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. 
The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way, too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. The solar battery. Let's see. Three times 648. He won't get it himself. Nope. Well, I bet he will. Tom Thomas is so smart. Yeah, smart, but lazy. I'll bet you a flick in the head. Then get ready. Huh? Shh. We promise. We can't bother him during homework time. I really wish I didn't have to write this out. Why write everything on paper when you got a calculator? I knew he'd say that. Without a calculator, he can't get it. It seems like the batteries are dead. Did you see that? The calculator won't turn on, so he's going to have to solve it by himself. What's the problem? Come on, where are the batteries here? <laughs> Sukanolik! Just come out already. I can hear that you're here. Hi, Tom Thomas. Well, you can't figure out where the batteries need to go? <laughs> I don't get what's so funny. Because there are no batteries inside of this thing. What do you mean, no? Then where does the calculator, you know, get a... Where does it get electricity? Uh-huh. There's a solar battery in there. The sun turns it on? A long time ago, it was discovered by scientists that some materials produce electricity when light hits them. Sheets that are made out of these materials are called photoelectric cells. By connecting a few of these photoelectric cells together, you can build a solar battery. A solar battery in a calculator sits behind a small clear window. And when light hits the solar battery, it produces the electricity that powers the calculator. I don't see a little window anywhere on here. That's because you covered up the window with a sticker for some reason. The reason is that it looks great. Good job. It looks really great, but it can't work now. Well, farewell, sticker. I can't get it off. Then just leave it alone. Go ahead and solve the problems without the calculator. Then I'll be the one flicking you. Flicking who? Did you forget? We're the Fixies, and we have to fix everything. Ah, Simka, that's a sneaky plan. It's not sneaky at all. You better find something to tear off the sticker with. Okay, how about them? take forever doing it this way. Yeah. I got an idea. Let's use this paper clip. And what's next? I'll just stick the end to the paper clip and then wrap it around. Tanish! With the help of solar batteries, we can produce electricity without burning any oil or coal. Unfortunately, these batteries aren't very powerful. A calculator can get enough energy from a small little battery. But in order to power a whole city with solar energy, you need to have power plants with huge fields full of solar batteries. And of course, it's best to build these plants where the sun shines bright and long, like out in the desert. By the way, 
in outer space, the sun shines very brightly, and it's never blocked by clouds. That's why all of the vehicles and satellites in space use solar energy for power, including the International Space Station, where astronauts from different countries work together. Tom Thomas! What, you guys all done? Uh-huh. Now you can go solve your problems on the calculator. But I already solved them on paper before you peeled off the sticker. Hooray! I'm the winner! Ow! That's totally unfair. If it wasn't for the sticker, you would have lost. What's going on? Nothing. Never mind. That's nothing to you? Well done, Tom Thomas. You got them all right. Now it's working. Look, a picture of our Nolik. Where? Where? Right there, on the calculator. Oh, I got it. Zero means no, Nolik. <laughs> Good one. The balloon. No way. You'll miss for sure. No problem. Huh. Anybody can do that. But I bet you can't do it if you tried bouncing the ball off the floor first. Just look. Oh, what are my parents gonna do to me? Maybe we should call Simka. Simka! And what's Simka gonna do to us when she sees this? So, got yourself in trouble, huh? You shouldn't be playing with a ball inside. And now we have your lamp to fix. But how? Only my dad can reach all the way up there. Why just your dad? You have a hot air balloon over there. That doesn't fly. It's just a toy, see? Well, it might be just a toy to you. But for us fixies, it's absolutely real. If an object is lighter than water, it floats up to the surface. And in the same way, if something is lighter than air, it floats upward. Did you know that hot air is lighter than cold air? Well, it is. And that means if you warm up the air in a balloon, it will float up. Hot air balloons use special gas burners to heat up the air inside of them so they will get lighter. And the bigger the balloon, the more people it can take up into the air. I know what you're saying, but where do we get a burner? You think fixies don't have their own burners? Huh. Sure we've got them. Bring it down here, and I'll go talk to our parents. No, no, and no. The human child must never see us. Listen now, Simka. We already don't approve of him seeing you and Nolik. He won't look. Papas, please. You're the one who told us how you dreamed of flying since you trained to go into space. Yeah. For two years I waited on standby, but I never went up. And you've never flown in a hot air balloon either, honey. So let's call it a deal. I talked them into it. There's just one condition. You can't watch. Okay. You can come in now. Now prepare the burner. Coming right up. <gasps> Permission for takeoff? Permission is granted. And off we go! Hooray! It's flying! Don't you peek! Turn around! Oh, it was an accident. I'm going to evaluate the damage. Maintaining proper altitude! Spot. Air balloons are really awesome. I wonder, who figured out how to do that? It was the Montgolfiers. The hot air balloon was invented in the 18th century by the Montgolfier brothers from France. In those days, there were no gas burners, so they heated the air inside the balloon by burning straw. At first, there were no passengers on their balloon. Not counting the fixies, of course. I mean, how else could a balloon get up in the air without them? Unfortunately, the names of the first fixies who took that flight were not recorded in the annals of history. 
Following the Fixie's flight, the next passengers were animals. A ram, a rooster, and a duck. And it was not until those three safely landed after flying a full four kilometers that humans dared to fly in hot air balloons themselves. Ever since their invention, hot air balloons have also gone by another name, Montgolfiers. Simka, please let your parents know that I'm so very thankful. Okay, by the way, now you can turn around. You know, Simka, let's fly the balloon just like them. There's no way, Nolik, we would need to use the burner, and kids aren't allowed to play with fire. I'll give you a ride. Look, I still need to put it back up on the shelf, so climb in and let's do it. <laughs> 